Okay guys, we're in Wisconsin. It's 39 degrees today, April 4th. Um, I'm finishing up a valve adjustment on a Toyota Tacoma, four-wheel drive, 2.7 liter, and I have a lot of experience doing shim and bucket valve adjustment. That's what the valve style is on this truck, and hopefully I can show you some things that I've learned doing this that will make it easier for you. Here we go. Okay, I'll show you some of the, the things involved in this job. The first step is to measure all the valve clearances. This is done using feeler gauges. Here's the feeler gauges I used for this job. I like to take them out of the pack. It's a lot easier to use and just sort of line them up on a paper towel and then I just pull out the ones that I need. In this case I when I initially did the valve adjustment I had out sizes 5 through 14 um, and when you measure the clearances the first thing you do is take notes you measure each valve here's the handwritten notes from the valve clearance measurement um, any valve that's found to be out of clearance then you remove the shim and measure that using these tools right here which I'll explain later there's the the tool that I use for removing shims there's the tool for holding the bucket down which is right here and of course a micrometer and some picks to pop the shim out, a magnet to grab the shim, a flashlight so that you can clearly see when you place the the holder for the bucket and once you've done that and measured the shims you can calculate which shims you need to replace. I actually make a spreadsheet and do it. Try to get out of the light here. Um, here it is and I could actually publish this spreadsheet for you guys to use. It's, it kind of helps. Um, there's eight intake valves, eight exhaust valves. The clearances are six to ten thousandths on the intake and ten to fourteen on the exhaust. I recommend setting them a little bit towards the looser end of that. So my target was eight thousandths on the intakes and 12 to 13 thousandths on the exhaust and so this is the sheet that I used when I installed the shims. Now I've completed this job except for one of the intake valves. I want to drop it down to just like a slightly greater valve clearance and even though it was in range it was at 7 I can make it an 8, a loose 8 from um, standard shims at the Toyota dealer and I needed to go get parts anyway so I'm going to do that right now. I'll show you how that's done. So here is everything. Um, oh, and this. When I pop the shims out, this is a nice way to keep track of them. I just put them in an egg carton and um, I also lined up the brand new shims that I had to purchase. So um, You want to stay organized when you do this job and the reason is there's calculations involved, there's lots of valves, and it's really easy to to make a mistake, put the, the wrong shim in, so on and so forth. Um, so it's good to be organized. And here's what the whole work area looks like. Here's my little shop. And there you go. So I'm going to pull the truck in right now and replace one shim for you. Okay, here we go. Alright, here's one more thing I want you to see um, as far as tools for removing the shims. I actually own this Snap-on YA8825 kit which is a shim style valve adjusting tool for Toyota. The little tool that holds the bucket down is awesome and it's like the only thing that will do this job 
but I don't like using these pliers and I don't use them. Instead, I have an older tool, this tool right here, which I used to be a Honda mechanic for Honda motorcycles, and this is the tool that is used for shimmin bucket valve adjustment on motorcycles. And I'll give you the part number for this tool. I use this for every shim adjust that I do because it allows you to press the bucket down with a lot of control and you also need some finesse when you release the bucket onto this tool here. It has to sit very precisely on the end of the tool and using this handheld valve or bucket depressor gives you the control you need to do that. Okay. All right, let's get started. I brought the truck in and have the hood up and as you can see, it's good to have a lot of light when you do a job like this. You really need to see what you're doing um, so you have a lot of control. I use this milk crate to stand on. It gets me up high enough to get in position to do the valve work. I'll put it on this side for doing the intake valves and the other side for doing the exhaust valves. Here's the valve cover. Just held on with two bolts right now. Um, like I said, I started this job before and I'm going to finish it up right now. So I'll go ahead and pull this cover off and get started. I've got the valve cover off and we are going to be replacing this intake valve right here, the shim on intake cylinder one, the forwardmost shim. Alright, I'm going to try to get good camera angles so you can see what's going on, but the first thing you want to do is position the cam lobe so it's pointed directly away from the bucket. So it's not actually straight up as far as the truck is concerned. Just look at the plane of the of the shim and have the lobe pointed directly away from it. That gives you the best access to the bucket and keeps the cam lobe away from where you're working so it doesn't get nicked or anything. Now, you see the little groove right here. I have it positioned right where I want it. This is It's really easy to rotate the, the bucket and you can get that groove in any position. I like it right about there because once you push the, the bucket down, you'll use that groove to pop the shim out. Okay, that's the best I can do with the camera. I'm afraid that you're not going to be able to see this because my hand will be in the way but let's give it a try. Oops. Okay. All right. Using this tool here, push the bucket down. You'll see it go down. There, that tool's fully inserted now. Use this tool to hold the bucket down. And you position it right back here on the edge of the bucket. And I'm probably going to block the camera. 
shot. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, right where I want to be. Right here. And pull the presser out, and there we go. Now we've got the shim accessible, bucket held down, and next. We use a pick to pop the shim up. There it's up. Make sure you get it up nice and high. Okay, cool. And then finally, we use a magnet. And there's our shim. Now I will go and get the replacement and pop it in. Okay, I'm back with the correct shim. It's right here. It's a Toyota 2750, that's 2.750 millimeter thickness. You always put the number side down so the cam bears on the other side. Um, assembly is in the reverse order, so simply take your shim bring it into position and you'll feel it when it goes in there that's in pull your magnet off now it's not fully down it's kind of like hung on the edge of the bucket just a little bit I use the same tool to just kind of scoot it down there I think that's down yep that's all the way in and then you simply press the bucket back down you saw the tool move pull the holder out and then remove the depressor it's that simple much better than using that pliers I can freely turn the, the bucket now and I'll go ahead and measure the clearance on this. I'm expecting eight thousandths. I'm guessing an eight will slide through and a nine won't. Here's the 8,000 feeler gauge. My hand will block the view, but here goes. Yep, it goes through easily. Try the nine. I like to wipe off the gauge before I put it in each time. I really try to keep dirt and grit out of the valve train as much as possible. And the nine, it's very tight. I can just get it in, so you could call this either a tight 9 or an 8. I'm going to call it an 8. And that's all there is to it. This valve adjustment on this engine is complete. Just need to now put on the new valve cover gasket and button it up. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.